In this documentary series, we've been granted unprecedented access by some of Australia's leading thoroughbred stud farms to document their foal's journey from birth through to becoming a racehorse. We will be documenting the formative stages of a select group of foals and their dams with the people involved who raise, care and educate our racehorses. You will witness the precious early stages of a foal's life as they take their first breath, first steps and their development over an 18 month period to becoming a thoroughbred racehorse. Nestled in the upper Hunter Valley of Australia is Sejinhoe Stud. Set on approximately 1,200 acres of irrigatable pasture, which are used only to raise and graze the farm's bloodstock, with access to approximately 10 kilometres of Hunter River frontage. Sejinhoe Stud is owned and operated by Kevin Maloney and the Maloney family, who purchased the farm in 2010 and have continued to invest heavily by doubling the size of the farm, transforming it into a world-class thoroughbred breeding operation. But why is this fertile pocket of Australia historical for producing and raising world-class racehorses? If you ever find, for example, vines, you'll always find horses. Like it's the Napa Valley or the Barossa Valley, and generally the reason for that is the quality of soil and you generally have water also. So the Hunter Valley has an abundance of water, but more importantly, it's got a beautiful uh, base of trace minerals under, under the ground. And uh, it's historically been the, num the number one place to breed horses in Australia. And I think we'll continue to do so. Sejinho Stud boasts an incredible record of breeding, a vast honour roll of individual stakes winners which includes the Group 1 winning graduates, Queensland Derby winner, Eagle Way, dual two-year-old Group 1 winner, King's Legacy, or stakes winner, Manuel, the flight stakes winner, Ohud, and Merchant Navy, winner of the Coolmore Stud Stakes at Flemington and the Diamond Jubilee Stakes at Royal Ascot in 2017. As we commence the Southern Hemisphere breeding season, the next chapter is due to be written for all farms and their bloodstock across New Zealand and Australia. One of the main reasons why we do so well is the incredible team of people we have here. Um, looking after the horses, it's a long process from the time the foal is uh, conceived to when they are sold as a yearling or go on to race on the track. There is a huge amount of effort that goes into, into that process from a lot of people and you know, without you know, a great team of people looking after those, you know, that outst the outstanding Brumier band, it just wouldn't be possible. At the end of the day, the horses are the number one priority on the farm and having staff that know them really well means that we can give a level of care that uh, is at a really high level. The level of expertise in the, in the Hunter Valley as a whole is exceptional. What sets us apart, I think, is we try and do everything naturally. So you'll see we don't run any horses on motorbikes or anything like that. They're always led everywhere. They're kept together in their groups as friends. It's a calm farm is the best way I could describe it. The horses are happy, they're content, there's no stress. And I truly believe that ha has an influence on the offspring as they go, particularly when they go into training. We obviously have great mares, we have a great farm. And when you put all that into the boiling pot, uh, what comes out is the leading farm of uh, producing stakes performers in Australia. It's a beautiful spring afternoon in the Hunter Valley. The final checks and tasks are being conducted for the day. But one mare, total attraction, is showing signs that she may be close to foaling. Uh, so timing wise, because her udder is full, 
uh, and she has the wax or so the little droplets of colostrum. Uh, I would reckon she's probably going to fall in the next, uh, she should fall in the next 12, max I think 24 hours. So everything we do is to try and keep it as natural as possible. When she does start the falling process, we'll bring her into the yard, leave her head collar on, we'll unclip her, walk out of the yard, uh, and yeah, we just let, basically, we let nature take its course. We're just there basically as a backup. If something does go wrong, we're there to help. Three fifteen a.m. The night watch team have now moved total attraction into a small yard. It's a boy. Total Attraction has given birth to a beautiful, healthy, written tycoon cult. The final stage of the folding process involves expulsion of the placenta. This usually occurs without significant straining by the mare and within 30 minutes to three hours at the birth. Failure to expel all or part of the placenta can result in infection and serious or life-threatening complications. Make sure it's all with it, no, nothing missing. Little pieces like these strings, we match make, them up. To, no, to make sure it's not inside though? Yep. Then we go through and find the non-pregnant horn and the pregnant horn. So that's a little hole in the non-pregnant horn. Yep. Which you do get. But it matches up so it's all there. And this is the pregnant horn. We pull it all out. Just check the body of it. That's your pregnant horn. It's nice and smooth. Rachel and Phil now check and lodge the mare's colostrum levels using a refractometer. Colostrum in the milk is liquid gold, full of antibodies, and gives the foal the best possible start to life. Well, this is just checking the colostrum levels to make sure that the foal's gonna get enough antibodies. I'll check it, and Rachel also checks it to make sure we get the right readings. And it's at a high reading of 30% which is good antibodies for the foal for its first feed. Yep, so it's reading at 30. With the initial checks completed, we wait to see if the foal would take his first steps. The main thing is to check the health of the mare and the foal first. So you're looking that the mare's comfortable, she's bright in her eye, she's not sweating, she doesn't have a temperature. 
everything post folding is normal. Then check their legs and the side whether the fold's good enough to live out in the yard or may need to go into the stable for um, a night or so. But this fold now is completely fine. He just needs to strengthen through his hocks and uh, you can do that out in the yard. At the moment, so she fall because she fall last night. We have them in this uh, smaller yard. Um, they stay here to sort of sort of about 12 to 18 hours old. Um, that's just to do with basically letting the mare fall bond um, before moving them to a bigger yard, and also so we can keep a close eye on them. They're near where all the people are, um, and also for the foal's legs. So when they're born, they're a little bit they're not sturdy. Um, they're a bit shaky on their legs, so just gives them time to build up strength, um, build that connection with the mare uh, before we move them to a new, a new, new, slightly bigger yard. This chestnut colt is by the prolific stallion Ritten Tycoon, sire of more than 45 individual stakes winners, which include Capitalist Ole Kirk, written by Pippi and Cool and Gatta, to name just a few. The Colts' dam, Total Attraction, won her first three starts in Victoria before being Group 2 placed for Peter Moody in the Phillies Classic over a mile at Mooney Valley. The Colt is a half-brother to Pretty in Pink, who won the listed Woodland Stakes as a two-year-old for John O'Shea before being dual Group 2 placed in that season. Total Attraction's foal, born in 2020, was sold at the 2022 Inglis Easter Yearling Sale for $900,000 by a Hong Kong based buyer. It is six hours since the colt was born and the farm's assistant yearly manager, Vicky Hager, conducts the post-birth routine of checking the foal's plasma. Just take this out. So the plasma and the blood are separated. And there's a marker on here that tells us how much we need to get just of the plasma. Beautiful. Wonderful. With all the preliminary checks having now been completed by the Sedgen Ho stud team, Total Attraction and her foal can now enjoy time together in a bigger paddock. The total attraction colt is now four days old, and the farm's general manager, Peter O'Brien, assesses how the colt's progressing. So uh, this is a total attraction colt. He's um, four days post foaling. The foal will just assess his legs, which are very good, and then they'll progress to a bigger paddock and join some other mares and foals and start the maturity process. We'll leave Total Attraction and her written tycoon colt as they enjoy the large, lush paddocks with a herd of the farm's other mare and foals. As we depart Sejinho Stud, we travel to meet another mare and her foal at Kitchwin Hill Stud in Gundy, New South Wales. Situated under 40 kilometres from Sejinho is Kitchwin Hill Stud, one of Australia's premier thoroughbred breeding farms owned and operated by the Brown family, Mick Malone and their dedicated team. Set in the idyllic surrounds of the Isis Valley, Kitchwin Hills takes in almost 1,000 acres of virgin horse country. Abundant in natural resources, the meandering Isis River, 
calcium-rich soils for bone strength and a sublime blend of flat, undulating and hilly country. The farm's undulating hills have produced an extensive list of elite racing graduates, such as the 2020 Kosciuszko winner, it's me, Group 1 All-Age Stakes winner, Pierata, the 2019 Everest winner, yes, 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 and the 2019 Melbourne Cup winner, Vow and Declare, are to name just a few. Some of the best blood horse, the horses in the country are here, some of the best blood stock. Some probably, you, you can learn so much from some of the great people that, that manage and run the farms. You know, you look, you look through the valley at some of the farms like Sedgino Stud, for instance, and Sledmere, and you know, Yarram and those sort of boys, and Coolmore and Godolphin. It's like just, if you want to learn, this is the place to be. And if you want to be around bloodstock that are at the highest level, there's probably no better place to be. Um, in Australia, uh, and I just think that it's 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 a beautiful place, and let's have a look around. That's why I want to be here. It is mid October, twenty twenty one. We join the farm stud master Mick Malone during his morning routine, assessing and checking the farm's mares and foals and we were introduced to a particular cult by I Am Invincible out of the Fastnet Rock Mare, Serene Majesty. Born on the 2nd of September, 2021, the now six-week-old colt shares a larger, undulating paddock with his mother around eight other mares and similar-aged foals, positioned to assist with their growth and education as part of the herd. Mick explains their processes to developing a racehorse, the thinking behind the breeding, and how this beautiful I Am Invincible colt came into their care. You start with Neil Werrett, and uh, a lot of the black caviar owners own this mare. Um, we purchased her, I purchased her for the guys as a yearling from Sedge and Ho Stud. Uh, we paid, I think, 400000 for her as a, as a yearling, so she's really well bred. He's like, what's all this about? I was just laying down. I pop up and use all this. With Fastnet Rock mares, you just get a lot of grossness to them. If You, you can go to the wrong stallion a bit, but if you look at this colt, he's quite refined and, you know, he's got that, got great quality, but he's refined, you know, he's not too heavy or like the first foal was the same. Um, beautiful bright eye, you know, nice head to him. I love to see a big hip and a good shoulder. He's got great deep wither down his back. Hey bud, can I pat you? Oh, hello. He's certainly all, all quality and I look forward to the next 18 months with him. This colt by the champion stallion I Am Invincible is out of the mare, Serene Majesty. I Am Invincible is the sire of some of Australia's best racehorses, including Marabi, Loving Gabby, Brazen Bow, Home Affairs, Vidora, and I Am A Star. These are only a few on this remarkable long list of offspring of this illustrious breed-shaping stallion. All our paddocks, we tend to try and have you know, a hill in it of some sort, that's what Kitchwin sort of sells itself on. And, and if you look at all of our paddocks, generally there's some undulation in it. He gets to, uh, to be up and down and running and we try and have our water down the bottom and then we feed them up high so they've got to do a few extra miles. All the feed that we feed is very high in, well, not very high, but high in salt. So they've pretty much got to go to water, you know, two or three times for a sit when they, for when they have one feed. That's a good walk for them. So they're doing a lot of miles. Mick says he never loses the awe of seeing a new foal being born. But do they ensure the owners of the horses are part of this special event? It is an amazing event. Like, it's an amazing event. And, uh, and it's just, there's so much emotion behind it as well. Like, we try and actually video as many births as we can so that the client's very involved in that. We do videos when they're, they're in the barn. We try and do as many videos as when we're vetting. And then when they get a video from when the water breaks right through to the foal's born, they love it and it just, I don't know, it brings them closer to what we're all doing and again, it, it creates longevity in the game because it's not just about the money, it's about the horse at the end of the day and 
and, and we've got to keep remembering that. So far in this episode, we've welcomed a newborn foal into the world at Sedgenho Stud and met a growing six-week-old colt at Kitchwin Hills. We now introduce our third foal in this series, a colt already two months old and being raised at one of Australia's leading nurseries, Newgate Farm. Newgate was founded by Henry Field in 2010 with only a handful of mares on a 250-acre leased property. Today, the Hunter Valley Farm is one of the leading stallion stations and nurseries in Australia, encompassing 1,700 acres of prime Hunter Valley land. A couple of the, the early successful studs started here and then success builds success and people want to be in a similar geographical proximity to the best operators. Now in this one valley, within 10 miles of this farm, you've got Godolphin, Sedgenhoe, Arrowfield, Vinery, Newgate, uh, just to name a few. And uh, when it became the natural place, because of, you know, Kyora stud next door was one of the very famous farms from, you know, 100 years ago. A lot of the other operators followed because they felt that this was the, the logical place to, to raise horses, given the success those farms had had. Newgate was started in 2010, and uh, we've built it up from like 12 mares and one stallion to today there's like 200 mares and 12 stallions, and we've got 50 or 60 people on the team working with us, and we've got a really strong, energetic, vibrant team, and it's it's been building something terrific. We're really proud of what we've developed. This colt is by the Group 1 Doncaster handicap winner, Brutal, who was retired to Newgate Farm in 2020 with his first crop of foals due to race in 2023. The colt is out of the mare, Janast, who was unraced, with her first foal selling as a yearling to the Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bott stable for $250,000 at the 2022 Inglis Easter Yearling Sale in Sydney. The colt was bred by one of Newgate's loyal clients, Nick Vass. So Nick Vass is a, a great supporter and a great friend of mine, and he, he, we, we work and do the maidens together every year, and he's a big fan of Brutal, uh, loved him as a racehorse, and we thought that reduced choice mares were ideal for Brutal, given the Brutal's a son of Last Tycoon, so it's a golden cross, that Last Tycoon Reduce Choice cross. And he, he didn't have that many race time, lifetime race starts, but in those he, he ran second to Winx in a wait for age race against the, and beat up all the best wait for age horses in the country outside of Winx we ran second to. At his seventh start, he won a Doncaster handicap, a time honored race that he won in fewer starts than any horse in history to win that race. So like that's the horse he was. Janice was on a race, but I, she was such a beautiful yearling, such an athletic yearling. I, I, I would bet any amount of money on the fact that she would have been a good runner. She's got a beautiful pedigree, she's my champion sire, and just, she's a mare that really complements Brutal well physically. So uh, the, the resulting foal, as you can see, is absolutely stunning. But genetically and physically, it was a perfect mating for her, and, and uh, we couldn't be more pleased with the outcome. Jim Kerry called me literally within five minutes of him being born. It was about half past six on a Sunday morning and he said, man, this is an unbelievable foal, just a really, really outstanding foal. So Jim Carey, there's no better judge of a foal than Jim. He's a masterful eye for a foal and one of the best pinnockers in the country. So when Jim says that, you know it's a good foal. Multiple Group 1 winners have been raised and sold off the farm, including Golden Slipper winner and champion two-year-old Stay Inside a son of the farm's own extreme choice. But how does the farm raise their next generation of racehorses? He was born in our following unit and he, he would have started for the first few weeks of his life in a small yard, just why his bones and joints and ligaments were developing. And now he's out in a 20 acre paddock with amazing amount of feed with 10 other mares and foals. And he learns to be part of the herd and natural as possible to be a horse. Uh, he'll be weaned in about February, March, which is where the 
the foal is, you know, he's, he's removed from his mother and they're naturally pretty much weaned already. They're happy to go their separate ways in the wild. They would naturally wean, that's sort of what happens. We'll then put this guy out. We have these huge 50 acre paddocks out in the hills um, that have dams and trees and gullies and the huge big natural paddocks of natural pasture. So we'll put him out in a paddock with 10 to 15 other colts for between like February, March through until he's ready for sales prep. And there, you know, he'll, he'll be a horse. We're a much bigger fan here of raising horses in that real natural, tough environment. Uh, I think our yearling paddock's probably the biggest in the, in the in the Hunter Valley. And it's been, I think it's been a big part of our success. And then he'll start a sales prep, do maybe seven or eight weeks in a sales prep towards the Magic Million sale. And he'll be sold at the 2023 Magic Million yearling sale. And he'll be a ripping colt for that for that sale because he's a mature, strong, powerful, you know, he'll be an early type for sure. In episode two, we'll catch up with some of our foals in the Hunter Valley to see how they've developed over the last nine months. Plus, we'll welcome a new yearling to the series as we document our racehorse's journey from paddock to post.